1919. The Peace Conference has been meeting in Paris since January. In March, the last Emperor of the KNK monarchies has to leave the country. The Danube monarchy has to recognize that the successor states loses several regions and becomes the Republic of Austria. In the spring of the same year, 63-year-old Sigmund Freud wrote a book at Berkelsen 19 in Vienna with the title Beyond the Pleasure Principle. What does the man want with it? Destroying his own work, which the pleasure principle always propagated as a kind of psychoanalytic law? A law that allows found its execution in the field of tension between pleasure and displeasure and transformed high excitements of unpleasure into low excitements of pleasure. So we try to produce pleasure and to avoid displeasure. Let us try to understand the essence of the work. We will not get lost in the sidelines that reading the book offers in abundance. The focus is on one observation. Why do neurotics keep looking for traumatic experiences from their childhood? In this memory you always only experience suffering, pain or danger. A striving for displeasure then? That would contradict the pleasure principle, the sacred cow of the psychoanalysis of the time. The striving for suffering is subject to a peculiar urge to repeat in neurotics, again and again to the pain. We repeat a lot, especially in childhood, we can't play a game often enough. These repetitions, which seem normal in childhood, later modulate into a Freud called the compulsion to repeat. A force that repeatedly binds us to displeasure. But let's stay briefly in childhood. Using a game with a spool of thread, Freud explains how children deal with who modulate a disturbing situation in play. The mother goes away, the bobbin is thrown away, the mother returns. The coil is back with the child. In this way, the child copes with unpleasant experience that the mother has abandoned to the child. But the fear is directed towards something else. It's not necessarily about mother not being there, but about mother not coming back. The displeasure is therefore sought out in the game, but it then quickly corrected again. The coil is back with the child. She's there. A fort da game. The experience of displeasure is therefore accepted in the game in order to develop into pleasure. But let us come back to the question mentioned at the beginning. Why do neurotics keep looking for disturbing memories of childhood, that is, driving for displeasure? Freud finds the answer in something that is beyond the pleasure principle, a structure that has a more original effect and is not yet dominated by the pleasure principle. Freud calls this structure the death instinct. This is not a mindless race to death on all destroying power, no. The death instinct is what wants to return to the previous one. The drive is always conservative at its core. He always wants to go back before life begins. But the death instinct is only an expression of an interruption, a pause that interrupts the lifeless that is life. The Freud instincts of self-preservation, power or self-esteem 
are only the soldiery of a death instinct on its detour through life. A death drive is opposed by only one drive and that is the life drive, which is exclusively sexual. Why sexually? Because he sustains life by working in the sexual union, which ensures the continued existence of man. The instinct for life or eros is not what keeps us alive and keeps us going every morning. The instinct for life secures the human being in itself. The life instinct is not about the individual, it's about humanity. A death drive is more original than the pleasure principle and precedes it. When the death instinct reaches the zone of the pleasure principle, what the pressure principle allows tries to take place, to keep the excitement low. The absence of excitement is the zero line. This is death. Thus the pleasure principle in its side of the conscious is a servant of the death instinct. The beyond of the pleasure principle is a, therefore the death instinct. In truth, however, he is on this side of the pleasure principle in which he works and is permanent striving to reduce tension. <laughs>